Hello and welcome to my channel. Hi, I'm Wendy Jahaney. Thank you so much if you're a subscriber. If not, click the subscribe button below and then the bell icon and you'll get to be notified when I create a new video. Today, I'm going to talk to you about in the hoop mug rugs. You're going, huh? In the hoop? In the hoop is a process of using your embroidery machine for sewing things putting things together, sewing fabric together, whether it's bags, stuffed animal toys. I'm going to have to test some of those things out. But what I've used it for is mug rugs. And you're going, mug rugs? That's the way I thought about a year ago. What the heck's all this mug rug stuff, huh? Well, they're really kind of like little mini, well, not mini, they're large coasters. <laughs> So instead of a square or a round coaster, you've got a rectangular coaster that you can make in a variety of sizes and it's cool and pretty and you can use your fabrics and embroider designs on it and applique on it. And it's really great because there's enough room on this. I actually think of it as like a mini placemat. <laughs> there's room for your coffee and a brownie, a glass of wine and a little cheese and crackers. Yeah, it's kind of handy. So I have admit, I kind of got addicted to them. Um, so when making these, it's a good idea to make sure you're doing your, your cotton and using products that are all washable. Because believe me, as I've mentioned or will mention several times in this video, yeah, I've spilled coffee and red wine on my mug rug. So psh, it's gone into the washing machine. This one here is one that I did and yep, it's been through the wash a few times. Um, this is great to use for your scraps. It's a fun gift to do for a uh, Secret Santa gift, friends, birthday, any type of gift that, hey, it's quick, it's pretty easy, use the scraps, it's not very expensive, and it's kind of fun because you can go out and find some mug rugs that fit their style. So these, are for me and my mother-in-law because my mother-in-law loves her coffee like I do and we both love purple. So I changed the design to have a purple mug. Um, these mug rugs, I'm using a design. This one here is a design by uh, Designs by Juju. Go out there and find the coffee, the mug rug hug in a mug and you can follow along or pick out probably almost any of them that have this type of format and it will work. This will walk you through it and also show you how your embroidery machine can be used for quilting as well as stitching and sewing this all together. So with that, biggest thing, print out the document when you get it and don't freak out that it's super long. A lot of printouts, a lot of images, which makes for really helpful in doing the project. So we're going to jump in and I'm going to show you how to do this. And I'll have to admit, I'm pretty pleased with how these turned out. Over here on the computer, I'm going to show you the process of, you know, you've ordered your mug rug from Designs by Juju. As you can see here, I have it in my order. And you've got this download button over here to the right, pink one, to show you to download each file individually. So, and that's how I do it, because I want to put each file in a different directory. So I'm going to download it. If you have multiple machines with different formats, go ahead and choose all formats. Ah, I don't. Mine is a baby lock, so I always just choose the PES file to download, and then I put it where I want it. So I've got a specific directory where I put things, and I'm going to choose that, and I'm going to put it there. I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to save it. Over here in my directory where I did save it, as you can see, I have a number of mug rugs. Since I've already unzipped the one, uh, there's the hug in a mug. What you would do is you click on that, extract all. Now, for those of you on an Apple, a Mac laptop computer, sorry, <laughs> you'll have to figure it out on your own but I have a Windows laptop, and so that's what we've got here. So extract all, and then it comes up and says, where do you want to install it to? I always 
break it out and change the name so I can actually read it in a mug, mug rug. So I make the folder <laughs> readable. And then you can say show extracted files when complete. I'm not going to because I'm going to take you to another one. And then you extract it. And there we go. It's extracting my files. And there it is. In here, <clears throat> excuse me, key thing you're going to want to open first is the PDF of instructions. Designs by Juju gives you very good instructions. Open that up. There you go. And at first, you're going to open it up and go, oh, my, there's a lot of pages. That's a good thing because that means somebody is giving you detailed instructions with pictures, which really go a long way. As you can see here, eight pages. No worries. Designs by Juju is also giving you a design that you can do in multiple hoop sizes, which is very, very nice. One purchase of, what did I pay for this? Four bucks? Yeah, four bucks. And it's giving me sizes of five by seven, six by and a half. So, I mean, come on, that's a, that's a pretty sweet deal. So you're gonna have to go out and purchase this pattern. Or you can, if you don't care for this one, maybe you're not a coffee drinker. Oh, so sad. Maybe you want to go find a wine one. That'd be totally cool. Or a quilting one. I just bought one that's a quilting one. And do that. Either way, you can still follow along with the basic concepts here. Pick out what size you want. Here you have your supply list. Depending on what size hoop you're going to be using amount of batting, et cetera. I will go over the product information uh, when I get back to the cutting table, but all of this is out here. And then she's just talking about planning out your fabrics, you know, as far as your front and your back, so you like how they look. FYI, lovely, don't you think? Don't you love those colors? Well, the design that you're getting is not necessarily those colors. That is something to be aware of. So when you put the, um, open up the file and you go, what, what? The flowers aren't orange, it's purple. Well, that's because that's up to you to change the colors to do whatever you want. So a lot of times her pictures do not match the colors in her um, embroidery files. Just be aware, no worries though. I'll walk you through that. Come on, computer, there we go. So we're gonna get our fabric and everything picked out. And then she's gonna walk you through just like I am. My machine is stalling a little here. What is going on? There we go, a little slow. She's gonna walk you through each step of what is going on. I'm gonna do the same for you in video format, but this way, you know, you're gonna to get to watch it in a video but also know if you get a good design from somebody, they should have steps like this that walk you through it. And heaven forbid they don't. Mm, with this video, you should be able to understand the basics of what they're doing. Here is your, so that's the PDF. Then in the PES directory or whatever format you downloaded, you're gonna find your mug rug. I am doing a six by 10 this time. I did a five by seven last time. It's really cute. But I think my mother-in-law, who I'm making this for, might want a bigger one. So I want to see what it's going to look like in bigger. So I opened it. Yeah, let's open this in. Actually, my machine is being, I've already got it opened. I opened it. <laughs> no, I didn't. We're going to open it in in brilliance and i actually have already where's my six by ten we're going to open this one this is the six by ten that you get as you can see ha huh, these colors don't quite match what the image showed that's okay and you're going oh geez 
over here, and I'm using in brilliance. If you open up this, you're going to see all the different pieces. And just like applique, you're going to look at these colors and go, what the, what the heck? Uh, pink, brown, pink, orange, brown, whatever. These colors are irrelevant. They're all about switching back and forth with a color so that your embroidery machine stops when you need to take an action. So she chose two very, very obviously different colors. Well, guess what? I just leave the same color in and follow the, I leave the same color in my embroidery machine and it will still stop. So we've got, if you choose each of these, you'll see, oh, the first one is the outline. That's gonna be stitched on. Guess what? Next one is the same thing. You're tacking things down. So each one of these is putting a line, if you will, a stitch, a straight stitch on your uh, backing, on your fabric as a placement of where to put the fabric. And then it shows, so this first one is big outline. Great, it's gonna do that on your stabilizer. Next one is the same thing on top of it. That's because the first step is put the batting on top of your stabilizer so it covers the first line. Then the next stitch here is to stitch down the stabilizer. So each of these is an action of a outline stitch, where to place your fabric, your batting, whatever. And the next stitch is your tack down, stack, tacking it down, which is a double stitch around everything to make it nice and secure. Then if you keep going, oh, right there, that stitch here, this is your quilting. So you're actually able to do quilting on your embroidery machine, which is so fun. Be aware of this one and pay attention when you get to this step, what color you're going to use. So based on your fabric choices, you're going to want to think about this and go, hmm, hmm what color thread do I want to use for my quilting? Because I kind of threw flew past this and I kept using black thread for all of these. And I got here and it started quilting. I went, oh, I don't want black quilting. So I had to rip out a few and put in a nice neutral. And then, so then you're in, they're in, you're into more tack down stitches. That's another tack. Okay, here we are. Now we're finally into our embroidery. So if you look at these, you can figure out What's this one? Oh, that's your leaves. So between here and here, that's your embroidered design. So those are the colors, the thread colors you're going to want to look at and figure out what colors you want to use. I have already gone through and created a purple one. My mother-in-law loves purple. So she also loves her coffee. So I'm gonna use a purple fabric and purple thread for the mug rug. So what I did was I came in here and one, I changed the color of thread. I'm using Floriani. So the rest of these are all saying, brother, I don't care. They're tacked down hidden stitches. I don't need to adjust them. It's like whatever, whatever colors you want. Here though, the Floriani, I want it to tell me as a reminder, put in this color for your quilting. And I don't care, I don't care. And then, oops, I missed one. This color, I want Floriani uh, 0416. Go, there it is. There we go. So I've chosen Floriani thread colors for each of these. I just chose them. I clicked on one color. I chose the uh, thread I want. So maybe you have Madeira. That's what I used to use, Madeira Rayon. And then choose your color so of what you have available. And then you choose it. So I've done that for all of the colors from here to here. That last one is the final stitching around everything. So then once you've done that, I, I just prefer to keep the original file intact. So I always do a 
save as stitch and working file. And I'm gonna I'm gonna call it the same thing I already did, but I put in there purple mug. So I know oh, I want to replace it. So I know when I'm looking for it again, ah, oh, that's the one with the cool purple fabric. And I can do other color sets if I want by resaving it. So that is how you do that. And then in Brilliance, it's really slick because I can print it out. The design. And if you want, and it's going to print out a picture of it, but then it's also going to print out all of my colors so I can have them right there in front of me. And I really shouldn't have done that because now that's really noisy printer uh, behind me. Just a minute, sorry about that. But that is the basics. Now I can take this print out to my colors of thread and I can pull my threads. Then we're ready to get started. Now that you have your file all figured out, <clears throat> the one thing I forgot to make sure you knew how to do, and I'm assuming you do because you have an embroidery machine, is transfer that wonderful file you have that you adjusted your colors on it to make it the way you want with the fabrics you've chosen, transfer it to a flash drive, USB card, whatever you want to call these things, jump drive. <laughs> There's so many different words for it. So this is the one I use for my embroidery files. Then, as you heard me print out, I have my printed file and my uh, file printout that has the colors I want and I highlighted the ones in yellow that I need to go pick from my collection of embroidery. I use Loriani, so I have my little tray here of the colors that I'm using. So that is all set and ready to go, along with my jump drive. Move that over there. Now, let's look at the supply list. Your supply list indicates batting. Batting is important and it's kind of up to you. I have a tendency to go grab whatever I've got leftovers. I save a lot of batting. I do a lot of long arming and so I have batting up the wazoo in variety sizes. So here's two pieces I have. This is what I used on my last one. It's, it's a cotton fairly heavy. Most of the time that's what I have is 100% cotton. So that's good. You want something that's good with washable. If you have something that might shrink a lot, might have a problem because guess what? You're going to need to wash these mug rugs if you're messy like I am. Yeah, I drink red wine and oops, spilled something the other day. <laughs> mug rug in the wash and it shrinks up just a tad, gets a little crinkly like I got a floaty just like your quilts do. So just keep that in mind. And you know what? You'll figure out what you like too. Other nice benefit of a good heavier cotton, like one of these, this one doesn't seem quite as heavy as that does. Um, some people have gone with something more, uh, well, more fluffy and stuff. I prefer one more like these, I feel it also gives more protection because I'm using my mug rug for hot coffee, not just for wine. Okay, so choose your batting and cut it out. I'm doing a six by 10, so my pieces are piece. You only need one. The other thing is um, your stabilizer. I should have started with that first. I am using a Durkee hoop. This is way bigger than I need. This is an eight by 12, but I don't have a six by 10 in my Durkee. The other thing is they are recommending a no show mesh cutaway, which is like this, very lightweight. It's not going to provide weight, anything for your mug rug. So, yeah, and that's why she also has a note, SF101 interfacing, because this provides no real stabilizing for the applique that's on there. So she feels that a little extra stabilization is needed. So she has this uh, SF101 interfacing and just go Google SF101. I happen to have, I do some sewing myself, 
in the past, mostly. So I have some iron-on interfacing, and what is mine? Mine is Value Pack, fusible, non-woven interfacing. Machine wash, you know, but it's, it's fusible on one side, so I cut out a piece of that that is the same as the center fabric, which is eight by seven. So I am putting that on there. Maybe you would rather use a little bit stronger cutaway stabilizer. Just be aware you've got seams and things like that, that it could cause some extra bulk, which is why the mesh is kind of nice in that regard. Play with it, try it. If you want to try this and you don't have anything but what you got, go with what you got, give it a try. You know, in this case, my six by 10 baby lock hoop, mm, this piece of mesh stabilizer just wasn't wide enough to put in the standard baby lock hoop. So I switched to my Durky hoop, which means I need a sticky stabilizer. My favorite is the sticky, sticky Fabry, oh, it's not, there we go, sticky Fabry. Solvy. It is water soluble. It's also printable, but we're not doing that. So you just put it here, take it off, and then stick it to my hoop. So this will work just fine. So that's what I decided to go with. So now we've got our stabilizer in our hoop. And then I got my colors picked out and my fabrics chosen. So I have two of my sides, two for the back, there's my primary color for the front and my purple mug. And of course, I think, I think I'm gonna try that batting instead of the other one. And there's my interfacing. I'm gonna go get all of my pieces. I'm gonna go put my interfacing on the back of the center. I'm gonna do that. And then we're ready to start the first step on the embroidery machine. And what it's gonna do, is it's going to draw a square that tells me where to put my batting. And yeah, I look at that now and go, well, okay, because I got a really big hoop, so I need to know where's the batting need to go. So let's get going. As per the first step, it drew a straight stitch around on my stabilizer, in this case, my sticky stabilizer. There we go, a little bit better view, I think. <laughs> there you go, I think you can see it. Which shows me exactly where to put my batting. So here's my batting, and I just need to set that over there. And you've been given plenty of room, so this isn't gonna be like, oh my gosh, it's gotta be a perfect match. And in my case, it's all sticky, so it just sticks there. If you're using your standard mesh or something that's a non-sticky, I still have had no, no problem with Designs by Juju mug rugs or whatever to just put my batting down there and leave it. I, I just, I haven't run into any problems feeling that I needed to tape it down. If you have any concerns about it shifting or whatever, then use a little painter's tape. That's what I prefer. Others using medical tape, there's some embroidery tape to tape down the edges if you like. But I found I just kind of set it on there. It is just fine. All it's gonna do on the next step is tack it down. The batting is now tacked down. Now we need to trim away the excess. And as I'm thinking about this going, oh, well, this could be fun with sticky, <laughs> sticky backing. Huh, huh. I didn't think about that very well, did I? But that's okay, it comes off. And then I'm using these scissors, hold on. These are wave applique. These are wave applique scissors. I don't know. The jury is still out on them, whether I like them or not. But in this case, it's handy because the little bill gets behind there. For this, it does a pretty decent job. 
Uh, for some, I just don't feel it gets close enough. So then I end up getting another pair of scissors out or two <laughs> for my trimming, but it gets the job done. I am going to trim that. Then we go back to the embroidery machine for the next outline stitch of telling us where to put the center fabric. So step four is finished. It has now created another outline. And you'll notice a lot of the outline keeps going on top of your original edges, but you've got two extra lines in here because this is gonna show you where to place your center fabric. I already put the interfacing on the back of my fabric and it goes here. As you can see, you are being given plenty of fabric to place over this. With that said, this is, these are really great projects for using scraps. So in that regard, sometimes what I've done is I've looked at it and went, well, heck, I probably could get by with a piece of fabric that is, oh, let's see, six and a half by six and a half and be just fine. And in this regard, she has us using the center fabric is eight by seven. Plenty, which that's what I generally would go with. But if I'm trying to use up my scraps and go, oh, this piece is perfect, but it's not eight by seven. Well, do a little double check before you start cutting stuff out and go, oh, it'll fit. We can make it work. You just have to make sure it's outside the edge of that outline line with enough, I'd say at, probably a good idea to have at least a quarter inch extra all the way around. So then when you put it on here and match things up, in this case, pretty easy. I just plop that sucker down there. In this case, once again, I do not secure mine. I, I just don't, um, I let it, it just works fine without, but you can easily tape it down if you'd like. Now we're gonna go to the machine and it's going to tack this down. It's gonna do two stitches all the way around and then we're gonna come and trim this up. As you can see, the center has been fully tacked down and I trimmed it up. Now the next step, step seven, is to do the quilting. So now make sure you have the thread you want to use for quilting in your machine. Don't do what I did the last time and left my black in. With that said, given the fact that all these stitches are just for straight stitches, placements, tack down, it doesn't matter what color you use. I put in a dark color so it was really easy for you to see what I was doing. If I was doing this myself without videoing it, I would have put in the color I needed for quilting and just use that for everything through the quilting. And then I'd start switching out that color when I got to the embroidery of the mug where the colors really mattered. That way you have a lot fewer changes of your thread. And with that, I'm gonna go get the quilting done. And then after the quilting is done, the next step it's going to do is do an outline of where to place your fabric for the mug. So I'm going to get that done as well. And in that case, I will probably switch back to a dark thread because the color I'm using for my quilting is very light on here, which means when I try and do the outline for my mug, it's not going to be very visible. And in that case, I wanna be able to see it so I get my fabric placed where it needs to be for that mug. And now the quilting is done and we have the outline of our mug that goes on there. So now I know where to place my purple fabric because I'm using purple. Purple is my mother-in-law's favorite color and you know what, it's my favorite color too. So in this case, I just need to position my fabric over there. Once again, the fabric is plenty big. So if I had not been able to find a piece of purple that I was happy with of that size, I could have probably gone with something smaller. Now it's going to tack this down. I'm going to trim it up. So we're at steps um, nine and 
Yeah, we're gonna finish nine after I've got the fabric on there. And then the next step of 10 is going to put a very new stitch right here along the edge. And that's going to be where we're gonna start adding our fabric for the edges. I will come back and show you that. And then once that is done, we're gonna duplicate the same thing on the other side. Okay, my mug is all tacked down, trimmed up, and I went and did the next step, which was step 10 that had one more line right there, a placement line. Be aware in the instructions for step 10, it says this will be at the bottom of the hoop. It's not, it's at the top of the hoop, but kind of irrelevant. You're getting the gist of what we're doing here. So that tack down is there. So then in step 11, you need to position your side fabric um, an eighth of an inch. <laughs> I'm gonna flip it this way for me. An eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch above that line. What you're doing is creating a seam. And I apologize, I chose fabric, which is a boutique, so you can't tell right sides from wrong side. This fabric <laughs> should be right side down. And actually it's like this, I apologize. It's like this, because what's gonna happen is you're creating a seam right there. So in sewing, that used to be five eighths of an inch. In quilting, it's a quarter of an inch. So if you put this fabric about a quarter of an inch away from that line, it's going to stitch here. And then you're going to be able to flip it over and press it. So make sure when you're doing this, fabric is right side down. Okay, it's going to tack that down for us. And then we'll move on to the next step to see what we're going to do next. Then once that's done, we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. You can't see it, but it stitched that fabric down. Remember, right side down for this fabric and you want it towards the middle of the mug because this next step is open it up. And this is just as if you sewed a seam. And then in this case, use your fingers and press that open. Now, if you have one of those cute itty bitty irons and you can iron that that way, that'd be fine. I didn't drag mine out. Sorry, didn't. But a good finger press does the job with this. If you're working with other in the hoop designs that are more complicated like um, bags and those kind of things, then it will be much more important for you to get your little iron out and do pressing just like you would if you were quilting a project or sewing a project. Pressing seams is so important in that work. In this, it's a mug rug. I got long nails so I can just finger press it. And there's my phone telling me I'm supposed to be doing something. Hang on, one minute. <laughs> Apologies for that. Normally I put my phone on do not disturb while I'm doing videos so that doesn't happen. But in this case, I was listening to an audiobook. So while I was stitching things out, I was wrapping up the audiobook to see who did it. It's a great mystery. Anyway, apologies for the distraction there. So that is what we do. The next step, it's going to stitch this down to keep that more secure. After that, it's gonna do a stitch here, placement stitch. So we're going to take our other piece of fabric right side down and put it here. It's gonna tack it. We're gonna flip it open and it's gonna do the next. I am gonna go and get all of those things done. I don't think you need to see me do every one of them. Oops, tacky stabilizer. And then we'll have the edges all done. And then the next piece is to start your embroidery. And there we go. We have both of our side fabrics stitched down, all secured. And I started with the first piece of the embroidery work, which was the coffee in the mug. The rest of it, except for the very last step, is all your embroidery work. And I'm sure you know how to do that. 
So get your colors picked out that coordinate with your mug fabric and your background fabric and let it go and get the embroidery done. Then we'll come back for the last step of the embroidery, which is to put your backing fabric on. And voila, the embroidery is done. And then I went ahead and did the final step, thinking the last step was going to be a placement stitch before the final tack down. Nope, <laughs> I should have gone back to the uh, paper instructions to pay attention and not get ahead of myself. Yep, the final stitch after the embroidery done is the final stitch to stitch the backing on your design, which means you need to put the backing fabric on. So in step 19, you take the two pieces of your backing fabric that you have folded in half. Yep, fold it in half, right sides out, and make sure the folded side is in the middle. Don't do what I did on the last one I did, and I got all done and went, oh, I put the raw edge in the middle. It was fine, but it wasn't right. Then, what she wants you to do is find the center here. So I've got an eight inch ruler and yeah, I can kind of see where the edges are. So it's like, oh, okay, great. There's my four inch middle and it doesn't need to be exact. So there's my four inches and we're gonna put these in the middle. Folded edge in the middle. Your second piece you want to slightly overlap this. She says an eighth to a quarter of an inch. You don't want it too much because the opening here is how you're going to flip this all inside out when you're done. So there we have it. We have it all secured. Uh, this one, my, my sticky background is gonna hold things in place pretty well. Otherwise use a little painter's tape um, to secure that. Otherwise, even when I was using the mesh backing on my last one, I did not tape it down. Now we're going to go back and let it do its final <laughs> stitch all the way around. Then we can take it out of the hoop, trim it up and flip it around and be done. Now I have the final stitching that secures the backing to the mug rug. When you're stitching this, when it gets over here where you've got your folded and loose sides, what I usually do is I just, I do, I kind of get my fingers in there and I hold that down nice and tight or go ahead and use a little bit of uh, fabric glue under there. Biggest thing is you don't want your embroidery foot when it comes back this way to catch that fabric and open that up because you will not be very happy with yourself. Okay, then I got this sticky stuff for you, they'll just be in the hoop, but we're going to just rip that off of there. And then I get my ruler out and I trim a fourth of the inch away from that seam. Yep. Fourth to an eighth whatever kind of feels right for you. Do this lickety split. Okay. Whoopsie. Then what I do is I go back and on these corners, I cut them at an angle and then I trim them so we've got a little bit of a V in there. This will help those corners um, come out better. Do that for each one of these. Just be careful that you don't cut into the thread there. Now you've got that done. Now you have the hole that had your, well, the opening in. This is why it's important. You have your folded edges here. And then you flip it in 
side out. And I should have brought my purple thing over here. Yep. So, just push that out. Get your finger in there. Okay, get that back there. Even those up. Yeah, I know. I don't have this all the way out. I didn't grab my purple thing, but the purple thing is perfect for this because it allows me to get up there in the corners and get those out and get those more pointy and sharp. Or if you prefer a more curved look to the corners of your mug rug, then leave it just like this. Then I Kind of press the back, try and get so the backing doesn't show on my front, and I'll take it to the ironing board and iron it. And it's done. If you want, you can come back and do a hand stitch and loop stitch, stitch this and hold it down. I'll admit, I've never done that. I don't feel any reason to do that. Um, I've had no issues when I've washed my mug rugs after spilling red wine on it. <laughs> so, there we go. This is the size of my original one, which is a five by seven. And this is the one that goes in the six by 10 hoop. So it's a size, what size was it supposed to be? Six by seven, six by eight and a half, which, huh, is it really eight and a half? No, it's Aha! She's got her measurements wrong. This is closer to six by seven and a half, which is, and the other one, huh, interesting. Her sizes on her uh, printout aren't quite right. This finishes, the, the five by seven hoop one finishes four and a half by six and a half. The six by 10 hoop finishes, oh, uh, about five, a little more than five and a quarter, five and a quarter by almost seven and three quarters. Okay, so that's a lot different than what her document states. Hey, I get it. I do documentation all the time and we're cutting and pasting and copying for something else and yeah, it gets missed. So I'll have to admit, I was a little concerned the six by 10 hoop size was gonna be uh, a little bit big, thinking maybe it would be closer to like, I don't know, a placemat. I think it's actually very nice. It gives me a little more room for brownies. <laughs> so this one is gonna go to my mother-in-law. Now, don't go away because I'm gonna show something else you can do. You go, wow, okay, that's nice, that's nice, I really like that, but, but I, really, I really don't like that applique design on there. I'm gonna show you a few things that you can do. So stay tuned. So now you're thinking, wow, I really love that mug rug, I love the quilting behind it, I love the style of the two different colors of fabric, but I'm really not partial to all of the designs that are available. I really have this cute design I'd like to put in there, like this one. <laughs> yeah, I bet you guys can relate to this. I thought now that would be cool for my quilting friends to put on a mug rug. This design is about four by three. So I'm like, okay, that should fit on that mug rug, I'm using the Embrilliant software. And I'm gonna flip over and see if we're gonna be able to do the same thing with Design Gallery, but I'm guessing we can. So what I've done is I've opened both files. Here's my mug rug file, which has the coffee is a hug in a mug embroidery on it. And then I opened my other file of the embroidery design I want to put on the mug rug. So let's go to hug in a mug. 
what I'm going to do is we know the embroidery starts at step 14 with the coffee in the coffee mug. And we know it goes till step 22, that last step we need to keep because that is the stitching of the background fabric all the way around. So guess what? I'm going to just take all that. I just selected it. I It's funny what you do and don't realize what you're doing. I left mouse click, shift left mouse click. I've highlighted all of it. I'm hitting the delete button. Ooh, look what we have. And you know what? This would be a really great idea to do a save. File, save as stitching and working, five by seven. Um, mug. Oh, hang on. We want to delete one more thing I just realized. Hang on. Let me get rid of that. We don't need this. Uh, there. We don't need the mug because my design has nothing to do with the mug. So I'm going to delete those two stitches also. Selected and hit delete. Okay. Do I need to get rid of anything else? That's okay. Yeah, this orange here in the middle is the size of my hoop because I haven't changed it. So just ignore that. Okay, now we've gotten rid of all we have now is our five by seven in the hoop mug rug with the quilting on it and the two fabrics, the th two fabrics, the center and the sides. Now I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save as stitch and working five by seven mug, rug, quilting, no design, quilting only. There we go. This way, I have this. In fact, I'm not going to keep it in that directory. I'm going to go all the way up to my mug rugs directory and I'm going to save it. That way, I now have this to be used the next time. So now we have our C me with a seam ripper design. I can grab this, choose it in, I highlight it, select it. I'm going to come up here and do edit, copy. Here, I switch back over to my mug rug design and do edit, paste. There we go. And it looks, when we choose all of it together, yeah, yeah, it fits right in there in the center. And if for some reason you need to, you know, resize that or whatever, you can grab that, use the handles, and maybe I want it a little bigger. I don't, so I'm not going to. It fits perfectly in my design. Now you're thinking, yeah, but you still got this silly last step there that is gonna show up before we get to my applique. No problem. I thought I could just move this one stitch below it. No, no, that doesn't work. So we're gonna select it. Actually, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select this whole mug in a rug. We're gonna do edit. Copy, edit, paste, it's at the bottom. Now, so what we've got is our hug in a mug design at the top, and we want to delete this last step because I don't want that done before I get to my applique. So we're going to do all of our stitches with our fabric. Then we're going to do our applique, not applique, our machine embroidery design. And then we still want that final step. So this has everything in it again. Instead, we're going to delete everything, select it all, hit the delete button, and I've deleted all of it. So now we've got everything from our mid original mug rug design, except for the coffee cup and the embroidery and the last step. And then we're going to do the embroidery and then it'll come back and circle around and do the uh, the final step to sew on the backing. 
there you have it. This way, you can take the basic mug rug that you like with the background quilting you like, and you're good to go. You can insert a different design that you want. Now, for many of you, you may have a embroidery machine that you can do that such that you could stitch everything on this design and just know, oh, I'm going to skip the pieces I don't need, which are the coffee cups and the final stitch, and then go pull up and import your design that you want to embroider, and then go back to the mug rug and do the final stitch. This way, if you have the software to do it, this makes it pretty cool. So now I'm going to do a save as mug rug see me with seam ripper. And there we go. I now have my file. With this, I will figure out and change the colors. Not a fan of these. And we'll go get some fabric that will coordinate and then get it stitched out so I can show you how that all turned out. With that said, maybe you really don't care whether you have the, the two different colors of fabric. Designs by Juju has two sets, Simply Quilted Mug Rug Set 1 and Set 2, that is one color of fabric, you can do one color on the front and one color on the back, with a variety of quilting designs. So you can choose a different style of quilting if you want, and then you can use these in the same concept that I just did by importing this in, adding your embroidery to it, and then saving it as that. And these only come in five by seven hoop sizes. And she's got two sets, set one and set two. So I might try that, but I'll have to admit, I'm kind of partial to the two color, two fabric design with this. And since this fits so well, we're gonna go with it. And we'll see how it turns out. And now I have a finished mug rug that is the same layout, two colors, but a unique embroidery design in the middle that I chose. So that was really fun. Also, I commented when I was showing you how to use Embrilliance to kind of merge the files together. I mentioned Design Gallery. It works the same way in Design Gallery as far as handling that. The thing you'll want to think about is the design you choose for this. This one ended up being pretty heavy stitching. I think what I would do is actually enlarge this maybe a little bit. And in this case, because of that heavy stitching, I was really glad I had the interfacing behind it. So be aware of that and the batting you choose as you choose the design or applique to have on your mug, mug rug. Also, hmm, I might go with a little less complicated quilting. So maybe that other mug rug that was a solid color fabric with a different quilting design might work. Something to keep in mind. Also, I commented I was still, the jury was out on these applique scissors. They work okay. Um, I realized with the mug rugs, I don't need to get super close to my trimming around the edges. What I did find out though, is this time I was using a five by seven hoop for my design. And so I was very close to the edge. Well, these scissors are very tricky to get in there when you're really close to the edge. So in that case, I like these, what are these? Havels. Huh. I'll have to see what I can find on those. These work better because they get my fingers and my hands up away from the hoop. And of course my trusty, ah, my trusty Tooltron, which is always good. Those just work really, really well for things. So just a thought on this, this would work fine probably yeah, when you don't need to be really close to the edge of the hoop. Otherwise, I found that uh, difficult to use. There we have it. Now you can purchase a in-the-hoop mug rug pattern and be confident of knowing how to read the instructions and do it. 
And in this case, be able to take that if you have an application like in Brilliance and be able to switch out the design that you want in the middle. Hope you found this helpful. It was quite fun to do and have a great day and take care.